What's good, everybody? It's your boy back with another reaction video. I'll be reacting to Creepy Night at the Office uh, Scary Stories Animated. I think this is from, if I remember correctly, I've had this on my computer for a little bit. I'm trying to remember the channel. I think it's Animated Horror Flicks 21 or something like that. Animated Horror Flicks, I think it's called. The channel. But anyway, I'll put a link in the description. So you can go check out their channel. All right. It's, it's funny because when I start watching these, react to them, I start getting more recommendations for them. So I was like, oh, this is no. Check this out. So everybody's on to go. <laughs> anyway, I want to go ahead and get it. I've been talking way too much in my other video. So I want to go ahead and just get right into it. It's only like 10 minutes or something like that. So here. This creepy story happened to me about six months ago while I was still working at my previous job and I thought I would share it while it still remains fresh in my mind. It looks really so good. I was at the office one day, I was working late and the rest of my co-workers were heading out to share a taxi home. So I was going to be up. the only one left in the building since our boss hadn't come into work for the past few days. That's because he's dead. I thought it was an interesting coincidence that he stopped showing up on Valentine's Day, but no one really knew for sure if he was seeing anyone. Although he had been coming to work on his motorcycle a lot more often lately, whatever that was supposed to mean. I didn't really care too much about prices. all the gossip, but I was getting kind of tired of the whole thing since it seemed it was all anyone could talk about at the time. The strong scent of perfume in the office and the mystery gift on his desk also had everyone talking. It was actually pretty cool not having the boss around at first, but unfortunately, the security alarm had started acting up and I needed his signature to approve the cost to call someone to fix it. Also, the key to the supply room went missing since he left, and he hadn't returned any of my messages about that or the alarm. Which was surprising because he was the kind of person that would generally take things very seriously. Just as my colleagues were about to leave the building, they asked if there was anyone waiting up for me because there was someone sitting inside a car in the parking lot outside. They seemed genuinely unnerved when I told them that I wasn't expecting anyone and they all decided to quietly leave together and ask me to be careful. What was really strange is that whoever it was had no business being there, but I initially brushed it off and thought the car would be gone by the time I got around to observing the parking lot for myself. About half an hour later, I received a message on my phone from Josh. One of not, my it's not in the Truth be told, I was so focused on my work, I had completely forgotten about the matter. I didn't respond to his message right away, but eventually I did find an excuse to pass in front of my boss's office overlooking the parking lot. I went into his office and peeked through the window. As I slowly pulled down the blinds, I was surprised to see someone still waiting in the parking lot. This was highly unusual, and it kind of creeped me out since the car was parked so close to mine. I couldn't really make out who it was, but as I looked closer, I could see it was definitely a man smoking Wait, a cigarette. For you to come out there was the nothing familiar about up. him, and I didn't recognize the car. Since I was the only person at the office, I couldn't shake this uncanny feeling that he really was waiting up for me for some reason and that it would be impossible to get to my car without him seeing me. I quickly returned to my desk and grabbed my phone so I could take a photo and confirm with Josh that it was the same car from before. While I waited for Josh to respond, the gift on the desk suddenly caught my eye. I thought that perhaps it was a perfume which would explain the strong scent inside the office lately, but I was also finger. curious to know if it really was a Valentine's gift and why it was still on his desk. Oh, it's a human heart! It seemed strange to leave it at the office. As I slowly opened the box, I was surprised to see a passport inside. I Suddenly I received a new message on my phone. I was initially confused by his response, but when I looked closely at the photo again, I could see that the car was empty. I was so quick to take the photo I hadn't even noticed. I immediately took another peek through the window. The car was still there, but with no one inside. 
It seemed so strange to abandon your car in the middle of the night, especially on a cold February night. Why are you still there? I was getting late and I still had a few more hours of work to catch up on, so a I decided more to get hours? back to it, hoping the car would be gone by the time I finished up. It said it was almost 9 o'clock at night. Are you serious? A few hours later, I got a little curious as to why Josh hadn't followed up with any other messages, which is when I realized that I've the battery on my phone like was that. dead. Because I wanted to, but I was too tired to stick man. around to recharge my phone at the office, so I closed Not it up and late. cautiously descended into the parking lot. No more than as I left the building, nine. I felt a sudden chill, but I didn't know if it was from the cold air or from seeing the same old car still parked and abandoned outside. A couple of things started running through my head at that point, like maybe he had too much to drink and decided to walk home, or the car was extremely low on gas. But deep down, I had a bad feeling. As I approached the abandoned car, I could see cigarette butts scattered all over the ground, everywhere, suggesting that he had been waiting for a lot longer than I thought. It seemed very bizarre to just take off after waiting for so long. He's in your back seat. I proceeded to my car and took one final look back at the office, which suddenly reminded me of the passport on the desk that I had completely forgotten to place back inside the box after getting distracted by my phone. You idiot. Knowing that my boss would totally flip out if he found out that someone had been snooping around his office, I reluctantly headed back into the building, since I had already worked so late and I really didn't want to have to wake up extra early the next morning, just to make sure I'd be the first to arrive at the office. I knew there was a chance that he wouldn't even show up the next day, but I wasn't going to risk it. I didn't bother turning the lights on because I knew my way around and I was going to be quick in and out. It was when I reached my boss's office that I noticed something very strange. The office chair that was previously behind the desk had been moved and both the box and the passport were missing. I had only been gone for a few minutes so it seemed plausible that whoever it was might still be inside the building with me, so I was quick to observe the rest of the office. Despite the intense moment of silence, I started to feel somewhat relieved to see the same old familiar office that I had grown accustomed to, and there was no other indication that anyone else was there. Hmm. However, well, this moment of silence there. and relief was quickly diminished by a loud thud coming from the supply room. It sounded like something very heavy hitting the floor. As I tried to figure out what could have caused such a loud noise, I suddenly heard the sound of what appeared to be a commotion coming from behind the door. After realizing that someone was in the supply room which required a key to open it, I began to assume that it was my boss or someone else with access to the office. But as I opened the door, I saw something that I will never forget and continues to haunt my darkest dreams. My knee-jerk reaction caused me to dash out of the office and immediately get to my car. Just as I was about to turn on the ignition, I instinctively looked up and saw the dark silhouette of a man standing by the same window in the office. I couldn't see a face, but I knew I was being watched. I turned the key and my heart sank as the engine failed to start. I tried again repeatedly before looking up at Why the office the car is always to see not that the dark figure had vanished. I gave the key one last turn and to my relief the engine shuddered to a start. I drove off and headed to the nearest police station. When I arrived there, I told them everything. Thanks to the photo I had taken of the car that was parked outside along with the partial description of the driver, the police were able to make an arrest and the driver was identified. Shockingly, it boss. turned out not to be my boss after all, oh. but a relative of his with a violent criminal record. Apparently, my boss wanted to surprise his young girlfriend with a trip to Brazil by inviting her to his office and gifting her with a brand new passport he had arranged but instead she wanted to break the whole thing off and in a fit of desperate rage he killed her in cold blood and went into hiding in an attempt to cover up his crime he convinced his noble brother to come by the office to collect the body and dispose of it i will never forget that night all the days i could smell her perfume as her lifeless body remained hidden behind the door while i went about my daily job you would and think the she'd have been decomposed being alone at night in the office with a violent criminal I can only imagine what may have occurred had I not left the building or she drove away soon shit enough. And pissed herself. I consider myself very lucky. It was him. It would be fun to lighten the strikes and it's actually the guy that was in the office. 
Those kind of look like him. Like they use the same model. I never saw my boss again black. after that. In fact, no one did. He became a ghost. His last known location was somewhere in Rio, and that was it. A few weeks later, I quit my job and started working security at the sub-level of a local hospital. It kind of felt like a step back, and I had serious reservations about working so close to the morgue. But I didn't think anything could be worse than that creepy night at the office. Hey, how much money you making? Unless you, if you make a less money, then yes, step back. But if you're making the same or more than if you're making more than a step forward. That was actually really creepy. <laughs> but you would think, like I said, you would think if the body was in the office and apparently I guess he had it sitting up or something because it just fell over. Um, unless that guy was in the, the guy must have been in the closet, maybe. Could have been in the closet and dropped the body. <laughs> That's why it will happen. Because it's hard, hard to hold on to it and dropped it. But you would think that might have been decomposed unless he put lime, but lie, but uh, you would smell that too. So, I don't know. Because he said days. I'm like, days in a closet. I don't care if it is cold outside. He said it's February, but it, you would think it had heat in the office, so it'd be warm in there. I guess not everything's going to make sense. Because <laughs> he put a lot of perfume on, but. Like, I've smelled a decomposing body. So, that must have been a shit ton of perfume to try to hide that smell. But even then, it's like putting on, like, deodorant and not showering or washing yourself. You just put deodorant on a, on a funky body. Like, it, it just makes it worse, if anything. It doesn't make it better. It doesn't make it smell better. Yeah, but, that's... <laughs> that is crazy. She called it off. Did, did, did she said that she wanted to break up with him, or that she just didn't want to go on a trip? He said a Rio, or whatever. So he killed her <laughs> in a fit of rage. He killed her. Like this dude has some serious like anger issues. He's killed up for that. Like and she broke up with him. Like, okay, but if it was just because she didn't want to go to Rio's, like, I don't want to go to Rio. <laughs> just start strangling her. And then he gets his criminal brother to get ready to buy. This, <laughs> this dude's an idiot. Like, he killed it. He killed I guess he killed it in the office and couldn't take the body out without being seen, maybe, I guess. So, he didn't put. Ah, it's, 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 you start poking, trying to, you know, poke holes and stuff, but it, it's still scary. And it's like, and, and like I said, I've worked late like that. One thing is, do working way too late. This dude worked. I will take that back. I worked late like this once. The only reason I worked late like this because I was going on leave uh, the next day. My leave, well, my leave was starting the next day, and uh, I worked until I think it was eleven o'clock at night. And I and I didn't want anyone calling me, asking me a damn thing, at time I I need to come back or some of the other. I stayed that late, did everything that I had, any even stuff that wasn't even coming due for months. I went on here and just, I said I'm gonna be here, just get it out the way, and just do it because I was only gone for like two weeks. It's funny, my supervisor called me like the next day, asking me about some folders or something he couldn't find I, was, I told him where he's at he's oh I, I looked over I was like boy because I, I always I remember I used to tell him don't call me to come back I'm not coming back because I'm too far away you come when I go on leave so when I was in military and I went on leave I would go you know visit my mom and my dad and my dad lives in St. Louis well he lives in Ferguson Missouri and uh, my mom lives in Chicago or right, just outside of Chicago so I was like, uh, well, she was in Chicago at the time, but I was like, um, don't call, don't call me, Thomas, I'm coming back. Cause they would do that in the middle. They would tell people, Hey, won't you come back? If, if something was, 
if they didn't do something or something. I'm like, do you need me to come back? Why don't you just do it? Everyone in that office is trained to do that job. I've done that where somebody didn't do it on leave and they forgot to do something. The customer comes in and he's like, oh, shit, I got it. And I do it. It's, I just do it. I'm not going to call this person in to, to or try to call this person in to come do it, even if I was their supervisor. I'm like, what? Like, don't, I think, and I've heard people that usually do that to, I guess, maintainers and stuff or uh, aircraft mechanics, but I don't ever, I, I, I've never been called in to come back. I, I had one time someone asked me if it were possible if I could come back. But that was the time I left and went to, uh, I think I had when I drove to, to Las Vegas. And I was like, hell no. I mean, I'm in Vegas. I drove here. I was like, even if it don't matter wh what, Type type of transportation. I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to come back anyway right away. Like no. What are you talking about? Like no. Just just if if, if I if it's like if I forgot something or got to do something or something came up where uh, I think at that time somebody I was working in reenlistment I think and somebody some officer was like I want to reenlist now and they gonna let him reenlist then and they wanted me to be there. I was like, what? I don't need to be there. Like, <laughs> it's like, just, just why you need me there? I'm, I'm thinking about it, it's pissing me off. Cause I was, I was like sticking myself on the phone like, what? I'm like, no, I ain't coming back. <laughs> but I've seen people do it when they come back cause they're not far away. So, uh, or they take leave and they know they still, I used to lie to, I would say, I take, I take, I'm taking leave. And I tell them I'm I'm uh, I, I only took and leave like that a couple of times where I would tell I put on that where I'm going and I would say I'm going to Chicago or whatever and I wouldn't leave <laughs> I'd be just at home so like <laughs> don't call me. it's funny enough they would never call me and anytime I ever did that they would never call I started taking like one day I leave like a couple of times a month I would take uh, a Friday off. So I'll take leave on Friday. And so I have a three day weekend. And a couple of times a month I would do that. And I, at, the, at the end of my, at the end of my, before I went into the reserve, um, I would take off. I did that, I think, uh, I started doing that every month. I would take two Fridays off that month. To take, do, take leave two Fridays off and have a three day weekend so twice a month. Cause I remember another guy I met who he, he we worked in the same office. He's in England now somewhere, but uh, he would do that. He started doing it every Friday. He was he worked he had four day work work days, and he'd be off on Friday. He started taking leave every try to take leave every Friday. He built up his leave, I think, because they had that type of leave where you don't use it; it just goes away. You lose it, so you they be like you have to take leave. I know one guy. He has. I think he had a month of leave that was getting ready to just go away. I forget what they call it, but uh, when it, when you lose it, but uh, and they, he was forced to take leave. He was a tech sergeant. And they said you have to take a thirty days of leave, and his uh, his uh, the superintendent. Told him, so he took thirty days of leave, and I guess he didn't like he liked working, so he didn't never take leave. I was like he took thirty days. They forced him to take thirty days of leave. Cause I think I had built up, I think I had built up 30 days and, uh, and I, I only took, like, I only went on leave, like, when I actually left the state two times a year where I would go, or usually sometimes be one time a year where I would just do two weeks and I'd be, I would go see my dad for a week and then go see my mom for a week and my brothers and then I would come back. But I would never. But that was it. And I, was, I had I had quite a bit of leave building up. So that's when I started doing that whole taking getting out in three day weekend type thing. But uh, yeah. Anyway, hope you enjoyed my reaction. And if you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. Hit that bell. You'll be notified when I upload new videos. Uh, comment down below. Share this video. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.